We are uh, back to chapter 6. We should finish chapter 6 today, and we're going to start chapter 7, the chapter on work and energy. So last time, we developed the equations of an object uh, that was dropping uh, in the influence of air friction, and we developed its acceleration. We noticed that the acceleration at t equals to 0, the acceleration is g, which is 9.8. Uh, but then, as t goes gets larger and larger, the acceleration drops exponentially. And then the velocity increases exponentially up to some maximum value known as the terminal velocity. And then the y of t is the, how, the, t, how the, the, dis, uh, the distance traveled by the object changes as a function of time. Then we dropped a piece of paper. I crumbled it. I, uh, I partially crumbled it. I uh, dropped it 2.5 seconds. That means the area was pretty big, okay, the surface area, and the friction caused it to go slowly down, and it took 2.5 seconds to go down. The, the distance uh, from the, where I dropped the paper to where it hit the ground is three meters. Then, if I did it again and really crumbled it back, and I got uh, uh, 0.83 seconds if I crumble the paper really good. Now, what would, it, what would a heavy object without much influence of air friction, how many seconds would it take that to hit the ground? I, did we calculate that? Let's see, if we ignore air friction to that, it makes sense that a really good crumbled paper takes 0.83 seconds. So that's about this, a little bit longer than it takes the, an object not influenced by air friction. 2.5 seconds is the one that goes like this as it's falling, okay? Uh, how about the final velocity of the object that hits the ground without air friction? The final would be 9.8 times the T. Okay, so uh, that's gonna tell us what the final velocity of an object dropped from a height of three meters would be if it hits the ground, once it hits the ground. Seven point six meters per second. Seven point six four meters per second. Okay, so now if I apply these equations to the paper, I can calculate what the B is and from there also calculate its final velocity, the final velocity of the paper should be what? Less than 7.64, right? Air friction, uh, if the equations are correct, the equations should give you an answer less than 7.64. So let's take this data, put here the y is three meters, put the mass of the uh, paper, uh, I believe I hadn't given you the mass of the paper last time. I'm not sure, but I reweighed it later, and I got the mass of the paper is 5.7 grams, which is 0 0.001123, right? 57 kilogram. So a very uh, light paper. So now what I'm going to do is put that there, put that there, and the B is my unknown. So so for the B, the coefficient of air friction. So 3 is equal to 0 0.0057 times 9.8 over B. And then T is the time that it took 2.5 seconds plus the mass 0 0.0057 over the B, e to the minus the b, which is still unknown, uh, two, uh, time is two and a half, over the mass, which is uh, 0 0.0057, minus the mass, 0 0.0057, over the b. So the b is the unknown. The b is unknown, 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 and then unknown. So this is an equation where the TI jumps in, and I'm going to put this in my TI and then have it put it uh, in the solver. And then what we can do, once we got the equation in the solver, then we can change the time, 0.83 seconds, 
And you know, we don't have to redo this uh, whole equation again. So pr you practice this as well. Put it in your equation, solver. So it's a humongous equation. 3 is equal to 0 0.0057 times 9.8 divided by x times uh, parentheses 2.5 plus 0 0.0057 divided by x times e to the power parentheses okay negative 2.5x divided by 0 0.0057 close parentheses minus 0 0.0057 divided by x close parentheses Whew. okay it's easy once you know how to do the parentheses and everything so enter and then press solve the b is going to be the constant of the air friction and this one is going to be in units of uh, everything is in uh, matrix units so it's going to be the units of newtons per meter per second. OK? Now, based on that, I can then go to find its velocity of the paper at 2.5 seconds. So it gives me, now I'm going to use the V equation, 0 0.0057 times uh, 9.8 divided by B okay times 1 minus e to the minus 0 0.044 times two and a half seconds divided by point, uh, 0 0.0057 this one you're not using the solver so you can quit from the solver and you're simply just putting all this in. 1 minus uh, e to the power negative 0 0.044 times 2.5 divided by this comes out to be almost 1. Gosh, how many zeros and nines is that? Eight nines. Now, what does that mean, that it's coming close to one? That the paper has reached or is about to reach its what? What is this? It's terminal velocity, right? Yeah. It's reaching its terminal velocity. Well, that makes sense because remember, for the two and a half seconds, I have the paper kind of flat, so it immediately reaches its terminal velocity and it just coasts, it coasts down, you know? So it reaches its immediate, uh, its terminal velocity very fast. So uh, this is almost 0.9, and then now I multiply this by 0 0.0057 times 9.8 divided by. 1 point, 1 point two six nine five something like that. So round it up to so 1.27 meters per second. So in that case, the terminal velocity is 1.27. So by the time it's reached the ground, it's already reached the uh, terminal velocity. Imme Im immediately as you drop it, it reaches terminal velocity, and then it just coasts. So now, if that is right, it should give us an answer much less than the, answer, the velocity of an object in free fall. Look at the velocity of an ob object in free fall, 7.64 meters per second. Good, huh? So we're in a sense, we're checking to see if the equations are giving us realistic answer. Now, how about 